Hi everyone, and we're back. Uh, I just finished that long episode. I'm so sorry. Uh, terribly bad, bad about that. Um, anyway, this is meandering uh, with me, Juliana, as your driver. There is no back seat uh, in meandering. You're just stuck with me, which in this game has involved a lot of silence, so I'm sure you're really glad. I try not to ramble. Uh, I do try to explain kind of what I'm doing while I do puzzles. If I go silent, uh, I will probably edit and post. Anyway, um, so we just solved that big puzzle in there with, uh, with the safe. Uh, we're coming out, and I'm going to see if we can work on the ground or something. I don't know. Um, I'm not really sure what we've got available to us. Um, at this point, if he says you... Order and method above all. Let us finish examining the mansion while no one is around. Okay, so I'm gonna head back over here, see if we missed anything the first time, which wouldn't be surprising. I mean, honestly... I see some papers that were not there the first time. Okay, that's good. Ernest Luggin. MD Brighton Cancer Institute 201 Dusk Road, Brighton, Sussex. To Sir Carmichael Clark, MD Comsite Cheston, Devon. Brighton, 1935, January the 5th. I think this is the one we've heard As a man of science, I owe it to you to be completely frank. Lady Clark, your wife is suffering from a generalized terminal cancer. I confess I didn't suspect anything like that during the first exams. But with the test results I have received today, there is unfortunately no place for doubt. I estimate that Lady Clark's life expectancy is no more than one year. Hmm. Hospitalization would not help in her case, so I advise you to keep her at home and provide her with as much morphine as required to ease her last moments. Yours sincerely, Ernest Logan. Hmm. Valuers report property. Building land located in Comside, Churston client, Sir Carmichael. Sir Carmichael Clark, 15th. April. Horton Brunskill. The name is familiar. Is that not the name of the firm Donald Fraser works for? Huh. These daggers are only ceremonial weapons. I do not think that the crime weapon is here. Interesting. Let's see if there's anything else over here. Um, so, nothing there. Um, nothing over here. We've looked over here. I'll check over there. Sir Carmichael's collection. Could rival that of a... Sir Carmichael. Okay, that of a major museum. Great. Not that I care about that right now. Um, it's not gonna let me... Huh. Hmm. Attention, Franklin. Task list. A. Ordering Lady Clark remedies. Done. B. Tidying up real estate property files. Done. C. Calling the lawyer about inventory. Done. D. Update the tenant farmer list. Done. E. Update land rent accounting. Huh. Done. F. Ordering a restock of arsenic. Done. P.S. I have left on the living room table some of my things I don't want to keep. The locket and the dagger. I am sure you know why. Thora. A dark dragon for a bright-haired maid. See. Mm. Nothing on the pile. Already seen similar daggers. Yes, we have. <sighs> hmm. So nothing there. Hmm. 
compass point to the south. Bronze and magnetite, Han Dynasty, circa 210 BC, purchased in Hong Kong 1935. There are some very valuable objects here. Hmm. Let's see if we can leave quite yet now that we know where. Ah, we can finally leave. Yay. Where is the horrible smell of carrion coming from? Nothing there. That looks odd. Brown pellets. <laughs> Revolting. Brown pellet. <laughs> Revolting. is a cue for me to cut and um yeah anyway so we got <laughs> revolting Ta -ta. the gardener does not follow the alignment there that's better it is symmetrical there Hmm. Odd. Dang it. I'm sorry, guys. Um, there'll be a ton for me to edit in this one. Uh, all right. Uh, Something on? makes me feel uncomfortable. It was probably the gardener who lit this fire. <laughs> Look here. I wonder if someone wanted to get rid of these papers. This subject would probably be useful to me. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. All right. Why did Thor leave personal belongings behind at Carmichael's? Well, she did leave those. Hey, and... Nope. No. Alright, she didn't stay behind to do that. Um, the dagger... Nope. Alright. 
There we go. Everything that Dora Gray has left that. behind comes from Sir Carmichael's collection. You most probably gave them to her. But she chose to leave them here rather than run the risk of being accused of theft. It is understandable when you know just how much Lady Clark mistrusted her. Let us now try and get our brand cells to work. Is Thora a poisoner? Gray had no reason to kill someone who only had a few months left to live. <laughs> the poison she ordered was for rats. The gardener must have made good use of it, considering the stinking remains on the pass not far from the property. <laughs> I've finished here. Kay. I must put the skeleton key back and inform Hastings that I'm returning to London. So we don't get to put them together right away. That will be a job for a desk. So I will have to put the skeleton key back in the lion's mouth. Clark's greenhouse. It hmm. must hold some rare plants. Clark's greenhouse. Interesting. May you have peace, Carmichael. Charlotte. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I hold on. Sorry, I saw the fence. I thought I would make a remark about it, but uh, I, I, I'm going to investigate it because that's new, different. Not that we actually get to investigate it, but uh, okay. All right, I will go back now. I apologize. Greenhouse. It must hold some rare plants. All right. Since I can't go there. Uh, because we investigated that. There's nothing to investigate over here, 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 over here. So we will return. Perfect. No. Okay. All right. Now we just need to call Hastings, and then we can be on our way back Are to London. Hastings? I have finished in Chester. 
I will take the first train. Tell me, do you know how to restore writing on a burnt document? Yes, you just have to soak a cloth with a hydrochloric acid solution and rub the sheet of paper. Then the characters appear. Bien. You have been of great assistance, Hastings. Could you please order the solution <coughs> as soon as possible? Of course, but what documents do you want to Pardon read? Pardon me? You will see, my friend. À ce soir. Donald Fraser is here. He insisted on waiting to see you. So many trophies. Man is tired. Donald is short of sleep, and it mm. looks as if he didn't even bother to undress before going to bed. This bottle is for our visitors. Personally, I prefer the sherry. <laughs> Royal Mathematical and Statistical Society's Bulletin, September the 9th, 1935. The alphabet murder, a methodical madman. It's highly probable that the alphabet Great. murderer will kill again. Could we possibly estimate the number of victims in his next crime? Yes, and it is easy. As soon as we know the ratio of towns, cities and villages whose names begin with a D and the ratio of English people whose names are spelled the same. On the one hand, the ratio of towns, cities and villages mm -hmm. in England with a name starting with D and on the other hand, the ratio of English people with a name also starting with D. After this initial calculation, it is easy to deduce the likelihood of actually being murdered if you belong to the target population. Go to the last page to find our results <laughs> and details on the calculations. Jeez. Billy Blag, August 31, 1935. Moustache at half mast. Poirot's repeated failure in ABC case. Sometimes small things trouble great <sighs> men. Hastings, faithful collaborator of the Belgian detective, knows something about it. Three mornings in a row, he confided to us, the cook broke the egg yolks when preparing Poirot's breakfast. This apparently casual event has greatly disturbed my friend. To the point it breaks his concentration and slows his judgment. I also noticed his moustache, of which he's so proud, being duller than usual. Poirot, I assure you I haven't said any such thing to the journalists. They twist everything. Hmm. Mr. Padova, I don't know why I'm here. You wanted to talk, and you came to find the only man capable of hearing you. Mr. Padova, since Betty's death, I've doubts about myself. I don't know what to do. And I keep having a horrible dream three nights in a row. Drink and tell me about this dream. It's always the same. I'm on the beach with Betty. I grab her around the throat 
And I squeeze, and squeeze until she's dead. Her head falls back, and I see that it's no longer Betty. It's Megan's face. Have you seen Megan Barnard recently? Yes, our grief has brought us together. I never really knew her before. She's really quite a remarkable girl. But I would never tell her about my dream. Why not? Is it her you are attacking in your dream? No, it's Betty. And once Betty is dead, it's Megan's face that appears in its place. Very interesting. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. How should that? Okay. Um. So, all right, how should, uh, how, I don't know, hold on, maybe, okay, we know it's, Two murders were premeditated and were carried out by the same murderer. No. Let's try the hard way. Okay. Really likes Megan. Okay, finally. Donald's starting... Mr. Fraser, I think that the real meaning of this dream is that you are in love with Megan Barnard. Please go on. Do. This dream certainly betrays your guilt. Oh. But what do you feel guilty about? Having killed your fiancé? Possible. Or forgetting her very quickly for her sister? Certainly. And this forgetting is perceived as a second death. So you don't really think I was the one who killed Betty? I do not exclude this theory. I am simply saying that I do not need to know that fact to explain your dream and your guilt. Thank you for being frank, Mr. Poirot. Hmm. You've helped me a great deal. I'm going back to Bexhill. I'll not take any more of your time up. It is late, Mr. Fraser, and you are tired. I'll sleep on the train. I like trains. It's easy to sleep rock by the sound of the wheels. 
poor boy. He seems completely mm. lost. Interesting. Well, women seem to like him. I think Megan will take care of him. Oh, I remember. Did you order the product I needed? Yes, we'll be receiving it tomorrow. Yeah, it is late. And ask Miss Gray to Excellent. come tomorrow morning. I have a few questions I wish to ask her. Woohoo! Mademoiselle, I asked you here and in order it's to very late, and I'm sorry. Question. Oi. All right, I'm going to stop it here. I'm so sorry for running this late. Um, I will stop this and, uh, yes. Uh, anyway, thank you so much. Uh, thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. Constructive criticism is most welcome. Please, 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 please leave constructive criticism. What you like, what you don't like, what we can be doing better, what you would like to see happen. Please. I love the feedback. Thank you so much. Have a lovely, lovely time until the next video.